other video in the R486 Sigma channel series of videos. I am Tom Radno, the Six Sigma Master Black Belt, uh, and um, if you're interested in additional information on R486 Sigma, uh, you can contact me at the R4LSS at gmail.com or follow at Twitter R4LSS. And uh, this video will be focusing on uh, some R functions for uh, typically the defined phase, uh, but but could be used for other phases. And what we're going to be looking at in this video is uh, some uh, uh, bar plots, pie charts, and Pareto charts uh, using the QCC package for R. So getting started uh, for for a bar chart, what we might be interested in is say comparing a uh, current uh, say mean cycle time for a process versus a target and uh, we've set up some data here bar data uh, with two values in the vector uh, the first being the current cycle time of say 45 minutes in a target state of 30 minutes And we can create a bar chart uh, using the bar plot command and passing it the bar data uh, vector. And as you can see, uh, it does produce a bar chart, a little bit uninspiring, uh, just two gray bars, uh, one at 45 and the other at 30. Uh, but really no uh, titles, no axis, no colors or anything. So we definitely want to uh, spruce this up a little bit uh, to make it more a little more visually appealing so we'll start by adding uh, main title and the command to do so is uh, main equals and then the text for uh, the title so here We've got main equals cycle time, actual versus target. And when we run that uh, with also passing bar data, we get uh, the title on the graph. Uh, so the next uh, feature we'll add to, to our bar graph here is some colors for the bars. And uh, we're going to do this in a couple of steps just for learning purposes. So we've got our bar plot command with the bar data. We've got our main equals uh, for our title and then the parameter col equals and then we can pass it uh, a list or vector of uh, color names. So in this case red and green and as you can see we've got the red bar and the green bar uh, now uh, displaying on our on our graphics device on our bar plot so that's starting to look a little better with the with the title and the color um, we can still uh, take it a little farther uh, we can add uh, some labels uh, to our bars so again we'll go through and identify uh, those three parameters and then the names.arg parameter again equals a vector with the names uh, of each of the bars in this case actual target so now we can see the difference uh, of which bar is which uh, red being the actual green being the target uh, next we're going to add a legend uh, so while the, uh, the, the titles are great uh, the legend may come in handy for uh, various uh, bar charts you might want to do. Uh, so again, we'll run through, all the way up through uh, our names, dot arg argument, and then legend equals, again, uh, a vector with the actual target. And as you can see, the legend is automatically uh, placed onto our plot. Uh, we can uh, adjust the legend 
uh, uh, to be in different places, but here we'll just uh, let the default uh, place it on on our chart. So definitely uh, making progress here with the colors and the labels. Uh, let's do one more thing and uh, add some titles to uh, the axis. All right, moving on to uh, putting uh, axis titles on. Uh, we can uh, go ahead and uh, set up our bar plot command again with uh, all of our previous settings. And then here, uh, xlab equals actual target as the title for the x-axis. And ylab equals cycle time in minutes. Uh, for uh, the y-axis and now we can see uh, both of those here pretty much uh, completing out uh, our bar chart so uh, there are additional uh, parameters you can use and if you uh, use the uh, question mark bar plot uh, for help uh, in R you can uh, find additional but this gives a pretty nice uh, setup for uh, for the bar chart. So uh, taking this one step farther, um, uh, if you remember from an earlier video we had a uh, vector called conference data. It had before and after uh, data for uh, a process and uh, here uh, you can see that uh, we're using uh, the, that data, uh, uh, applying a function mean to uh, the data. Let's, we can take a quick look uh, to remind us that uh, uh, field 7 and 5 were the um, baseline and uh, the improved data. And the apply function allows us to take the mean of those two columns and plot them against each other. And there is a uh, built-in function called heat.colors. And I asked for two colors that provide, uh, in this case, uh, orange and yellow, or reddish orange and yellow. And you can specify any number of colors here, and it'll provide different colors out. So this is just a little... A fancier approach to find the mean of a set of data and to to bar graph those. Okay, so uh, moving on to a uh, new example. Uh, consider the idea of having to uh, provide some graphical uh, explanation around, uh, let's say, call center complaints. Uh, by counts by complaint type and you might have data uh, for uh, in this case uh, six different complaint types and uh, you have a hundred of one 45 uh, complaints of the next 22 19 75 66 so this just sets up um, a vector with that information uh, those data data values and we can take a quick uh, look at that and we can see that our our vector uh, comp count complaint count has those in there so with that data we can go ahead and uh, do a pie chart and the command for doing a pie chart is simple it is uh, just pie and here we're also uh, using the main uh, equals pie chart um, similar to the bar plot that helps us set up our uh, title on the part uh, pie chart uh, again uh, defaults the colors and um, just labels them one two three four five six uh, by default so uh, we probably would like to again have a little more control over uh, what our pie chart looks like so by utilizing some additional uh, arguments into the call we can uh, uh, make this a little more visually appealing so we would like to have our own uh, descriptions of um, uh, the, of the numbers 
uh, on the pie slices. We'd like to have something a little more descriptive, a little more meaningful. So we have our original command pie with our uh, complaint count in the title. And then here we will uh, use the uh, labels uh, argument and send it a um, vector that has the descriptions that go with each of the numbers. And now you can see that it replaces uh, the numbers with uh, these descriptive categories for each of the slices. And they go in order uh, in a counterclockwise direction. Okay. Um, we're going to set up, we just copied uh, the uh, complaint count into uh, a vector called error count. And the reason I'm doing that is the, there's an optional way to uh, provide uh, these slice names, uh, category names, so we, we can actually make it part of the data itself. And here uh, we're going to use the names command to apply uh, names to each of the values within the actual uh, vector itself or list itself. So uh, we can now look at uh, the variable error count and see that uh, not only does the uh, the vector here have uh, the data but also uh, descriptions and if we look use the structure command in R it tells us that uh, you know, the data is a name number uh, has six uh, categories and it has an attribute of names which is each of the names so now if we apply uh, or utilize the pi pie chart um, well, we can see here that we didn't specify the labels uh, but it knew to pick the labels up from from the data itself and uh, for colors um, I used the uh, the built-in function in R called rainbow and the rainbow took uh, asked it for six different colors and that colored each of our slices a different color okay so uh, moving on to the final uh, uh, topic in this video which is uh, Pareto charts and I'm just going to clear my console here and get us going and in order uh, to use the uh, Pareto chart uh, function that's already built in the QCC library uh, we will need to load um, that library and just as a note the QCC library uh, does have Pareto charts also has functions for control charts and capability analysis and we'll look at those in a future video. So here uh, we will look at doing Pareto charts. Uh, the function call for that is Pareto.chart and it does take uh, some parameters. But first we need to uh, load the library uh, QCC uh, and I loaded it earlier so we don't see any messages here but you do uh, need to load the library and then very simply we'll just pass it um, our complaint count um, data from earlier and just remember what that looks like um, it's just the, that vector of the six numbers and now we'll make the call to uh, the Pareto chart and we can see here on the right we uh, get the Pareto chart uh, with our frequency bars as well as our cumulative percentage uh, we've got the uh, counts here on the left with the frequency and the percentages here on the right axis uh, but on the bottom, of course, there were no descriptions. So here, instead of numbers that you get on the pie chart, you get letters uh, A through F. Uh, you also do get a text readout uh, with the frequency, cumulative frequency, uh, percentage, and cumulative percentage. And uh, that's the data that corresponds uh, to, to the Pareto chart. Uh, and what we can do is... Uh, I'll utilize our uh, our error count variable that did have the named 
the named attribute. Uh, and we can use this, use that to pass the Pareto chart. And we'll get it with uh, what the names and descriptions are there. So very simple to build a, a Pareto chart. Uh, just have your uh, your single vector, uh, if it's named, of course, it'll it'll pull those and use those on, on each of the bars. Uh, so that QCC library or package uh, is very handy there. So uh, that wraps us up for, for this video. So I uh, appreciate uh, you taking time to look. And uh, our next video is going to be a little different um, because uh, I've picked up a Raspberry Pi, which is a a small credit size uh, card computer uh, and I've been able to get R uh, to run on it and the beauty of that is that the, the Raspberry Pi costs about uh, $39 and uh, if you've got a monitor keyboard and a mouse already and basically a, a USB uh, charger of any sort to, to power uh, the Raspberry Pi it makes for a very cost-effective a solution for running statistics so that'll be coming up soon so uh, thanks again and uh, look forward to seeing you in a future video